Easy Tigers. I hope everyone's fine and dandy. Welcome back. First things first, just want to big up the Patreons as always. Thanks to you guys, I get to stay at the Matrix and explore these topics and give you my opinion on the matter. So if you want to join the gang, I'll leave the links in the description and embedded on my page. Now, I'm going to waffle on today about something called Waffle Rock. I don't know if you guys have heard of it. It got brought to my attention by Mr. X, which is the guy who's given me all the information about the geopolymer. Now, this seems to be some sort of fragmented rock with... We're going to work out or, or go through opinions or whatever it is, but it's got something over it and God knows what it is. It's sandstone, so it's probably a geopolymer block or rock with something on it. But let's see what the narratives say about this little gem, shall we? So... So it goes to say, the Waffle Rock, just outside the visitor centre of Jennings Randolph Lake in Mineral County, that's quite interesting, Mineral County, in the US state of West Virginia, is a large piece of rock on display. On one side of the rock, there appears to be a regular waffle-like geometric pattern of raised, darker stone that runs in almost perfectly straight lines across the rock surface. The lines across themselves at various angles, forming a deep pockets of lighter coloured material. So the strange patterning on the so-called waffle rock is a result of natural erosion. Although over the years many alternative theories regarding its origin have evolved. And these involve pretty much the usual aliens, giant reptiles and ancient Indian societies. So that was just one little website with a bit of narrative. Let's have a look at another one. Sorry to go into a bit of a story mode, but I'm just going to read the script. So, once upon a time, there was a rock. This rock was different from all other rocks, and the local natives believed it was sacred. There were years passed, and the area near the rock became known as a town called Shore. This town was located somewhere in Mineral County, West Virginia. The town of Shore had a river running through it called the Potomac. Then one day, some engineers decided to build a dam on this river. To build this dam meant that the town of Shore would be flooded forever, along with the magnificent rock. In place of the town and rock would be a lake, Jennings Randolph Lake. See, that's interesting that they've, it seems to me like there must have been some serious history in this place and they've just flooded it. And this is another thing that they do, they seem to flood things. And especially all these um, old sites that get turned into quarries, they seem to flood them. But anyway, continue reading. Luckily, someone realised that this rock should not be lost to the people and decided to move it. Unfortunately, this rock was a big one. So it's decided that the portion of the rock, now dubbed Waffle Rock, would be removed from the hole and be saved. The position of Waffle Rock now sits on an overlook of the lake. This rather large hunk has been dubbed as the Waffle Rock Boulder and has been a tourist attraction since its placement in 1985. Another piece of the rock now resides at the Smithsonian Institute in Washington DC. Yeah, these cats had to get involved, didn't they? They had to get involved. See, Waffle Rock is not only interesting to look at, but it also surrounded in mystery. No one seems to know just how the strange geometric patterns can be, or came to be. Of course there are many theories out there, to name a few, carved by ancient Native Americans, reptilian aliens, more aliens made a landmark, an alien aircraft landed on it and left the patterns behind, electromagnetic fields, an electrical storm or lightning strike, sandstone formed cracks and over time those cracks filled with quartz since the two rocks eroded at different rates and the waffle appearance are formed uh, if you ask me they're all cobblers they're all absolute cobblers uh, I, I, I don't know I've just got an opinion that, and like I said before and I'll always say it all we have is opinions and if you don't like the opinion then it's going to stink because an opinion is just like a bummer where everyone's got one The U.S. Corps of Engineers offers some insight into the rock's formation. As explained in this article, the sandstone layers that make up the rock were originally deposited about 300 to 250 million years ago. 
Then as the continent began to break up by tectonic plates, shifts. About 200 million years ago, the sandstone block was formed onto itself repeatedly, creating cracks into the sandstone. In about another 100 million years, the cracks begin to fill with iron oxide leached or leached from the surrounding rock by the percolating waters. The iron oxide mixed with the sand grains in the cracks and formed a super hard material resistant to weathering comp compared to the surrounding sandstone pieces. As the sandstone rock eroded away, it left behind the hard iron oxide waffle-like pattern on the rock. <laughs> you can't make that up. Well, they did make that up, but what a load of BS. Like, they're talking 200, 300 million years ago. Like, how do you even know that stuff? This is just a little, it's just a load of cobblers. Like, they're trying to explain something. Clearly, it's, it's part of some old world building, and it had some sort of iron frame in there. That's what I, I that's my opinion. That's my bum hole of it. The boulder lodged into the ground at Jennings Randolph Lake is a small piece of this rock that is believed to have been broken off from a parent outcrop somewhere higher up the slope. A smaller piece of the same rock is also on display in the Smithsonian Institute in Washington. The waffle rock formation is not common, although similar pattern boulders have been found in Monogonalia, don't know if I said that right, Pennsylvania, and at Tea Creek Mountain in Pocahontas County, West Virginia. Many other undocumented examples of the stone patterning is in several other places around the world so it isn't uncommon and it is around so hmm. so let's get it straight there's uh, more than a handful or a dozen of these rocks all around the world with this sort of waffling on it so what do you think it could be like if they're saying it was tectonic plates moving and then it kept like going up and down itself and then mineral deposits on it what's the chances of that happening in the same in different spots all over the world no chance mate obviously it's some sort of building technique or part of some old world structure that was used universally around the world that's why it is around the world in different places okay let's now investigate let's have a little zoom in on these patterns and what this material looks like so it's clearly done, this is not done by nature, because look at the precision of this geometric shape. Look at that. And you can see that they've been slotted next to each other, because there's a line going down like the centre of them, like it's done in sections. So to me that tells me that's some sort of geopolymer, or smelted metal that's maybe petrified. But look at that, what could that be for, honestly? I was doing some research on this last night, but sometimes when I lose the stuff, apparently they're digging up a road in Russia. And when they dug it up, there was all this underneath it. And then when I heard that or read that, and in my brain, I thought, well, maybe this is something to do with transport. Maybe this was like the electromagnetics under, the, or, or was the roads. Maybe it was part of the roads. But that was just stuff running through my head. But it's sitting on sandstone. And you have these patterns on there, and the patterns are a completely different material. So this has been put together by someone, or some something. And like I said, there's a few of them all over the world. And this is another, this is a close-up of another pattern of a sandstone rock with the same mineral deposit on top. But this one just seems a little bit older, or a little bit more damaged, should we say? But look at it. Very peculiar. Oh, and another thing this looks like, if anyone's done any tiling and you put the uh, grout on the back, you put the tile on, you take the tile off again, and this is the imprint you get. I'm not saying that's what it is, but I'm just finding it's very peculiar. Very, very peculiar. And it's funny that they flooded the whole of that shore, shore town, basically, <laughs> like just to build a dam. Like they got, like, like against everyone's will, they booted everyone out and then flooded the gaff. It's very peculiar, and this is just how they hide history. So they turn it into quarries, or they flood it, or they blow it up. But you tell me, why is this geometric pattern spread all over? Anyway, I've probably bored you and bored the socks off you for waffling on that much. So let's have a Brucey bonus, shall we? Now this Brucey is going to be a bit different because I'm going to big some people up, and then I'm going to put someone under the micro microscope because. 
I've noticed something they've done and it ain't right. A big up Scorpion King for making this website for me. Now I'll leave the link in the description for this because this, this is amazing. I can't believe like this. I'm so grateful. But yeah, go and have a look at this website. And they actually put websites together for you if you pay them the money. So I'll leave a link or an email in the description so you can contact them if you need a website made. It'll be just as good as this. And now I want to pick up some channels. So over in Australia, we've got Tartarian Troopers. These guys are banging out some proper content at the moment. And that's keeping me occupied. Bushwhacking history in Buffalo. Dustin, what a guy, mate. This geezer's uncovering all sorts of stuff over in America. Checking it out, going over Niagara Falls. Wood and Nichols and all, what a lovely guy. Hopefully I can get on a little show with us. Wood and Nichols and Dustin. Hopefully. And then Mind Unveiled. These guys, I'm telling you, this at the moment, this is my favourite channel on YouTube. These guys are just absolutely killing it. Like The content they're doing is stuff that I love. Personally, I love. So when I go and make a video, it's like these guys are like a step in front of me or we're in sync or something. But anyway, these four channels, go and give them a subscribe because these guys will keep you occupied with real knowledge. Now, I've been doing some research on Geopolymer and see if I could buy the stuff. It's uh, very interesting. So I was just looking where you can buy this Geopolymer mix because everything I'm looking at now is just like where I'm so awake to it. It's, it's just, I can see everything, right? So I wanted to know where you can buy it and I wanted to do some experiments myself. But it turns out this stuff is incredibly expensive. Geopolymer 3D printing mortar products in all sizes. This is a structural mortar with an adjustable set time and perfect thick ox tropy for easy layering. Right, so let me, I, I made a joke about a year ago about 3D printing these buildings in um, India because they look like 3D printed. Look at this. So when I say 3D printed, I don't mach, like, like a, a printer printing a house. Like there's probably some sort of machine with an arm pumping the concrete into place and that's how you look at these old places in India that's how they look like they're done they look like they're 3d printed but anyway let's carry on going my point is what they're doing now is they're 3d printing houses or structures with geopolymer you know right so Renka geopolymer 3d structural mortar Geopolymer concrete is the safer, stronger, sustainable alternative to Portland cement. It boasts a higher comprehensive strength and a better fireproofing than Portland cement. See, this is what I said before, right? You, we was only given Portland cement to make the buildings weaker. So these buildings only last 100, 200 years maximum. When you look at the older buildings made out of this liquid limestone or the geopolymer mixes, they last, well, they're still about now. You can go to the oldest places like Baalbek that are meant to be 12,000 years old. Half of it, well more than half of it, even South America, geopolymer, still there now. Do you get what I'm saying? So we literally, as this time we speak on this plane now, we have the worst of everything. Yet we're fed and told it's the best. And because we weren't around donkeys years ago, we don't know no different. We're just put in a, in a schoolroom from the age of like four years old till like 20, 21, whatever it is now. And you're just blasted with absolute propaganda and BS. Just so when you leave school and you go and live in this realm, you don't ask questions because you've learned it at school already. Anyway, I just wanted to jump back to this picture because um, obviously, like I said, I'm going to call him Mr. Rex. This guy, like, I, I knew I was on the right path before I spoke to this guy, but he's just solidified and clarified everything. This is a massive block of geopolymer and it has the noobs around the sides so the mix could get pumped in evenly. That's why that's there. It's, it's unbelievable. When you know what you're looking at, it's, it's pff, I'm blessed now. I'm absolutely blessed. So big up, Mr. X. I appreciate that, man. I can see everything now. And it's nice to know that I was right. That's a, that's a good thing. But yeah, massive geopolymer block. Done in one hit. Fed through multiple, multiple entrances. Now, this is a geopolymer workshop. And they're making columns for a, a building. Now it's a little bit different from the ones they used back in the day because these are hollow, these ones. And the ones they used before were just 
pure concrete or sorry geopolymer solid all the way through so here we'd like just like I said it's like a cheaper version this probably won't last as long and imagine if a car went into this it would literally smash it do you know what I mean but if a car went into the other ones the car would smash up but yeah you can make this geopolymer any color you want as well this is another thing I was being told there's certain dyes and certain things you can add to it to give it that certain colors and uh, I mean if you don't get it now I don't think you're ever gonna get it and I don't mean that in a horrible way I mean like I said before in the video I'm not biased I'm just looking for the truth and I don't care what the truth is as long as I come across it and this is part of it like yesterday in the live feed people are going ah oh, it's not real geopolymer mate you're crackers you are crackers mate and people are saying oh it's melted red brick you gotta get rid of that theory really that melted red brick, red brick theory is a load of cobblers I'm telling you because melted brick like I went through it before either if it's made of clay it will melt and droop yeah and you won't have no straight lines in melted bricks alright so and another thing is if it's made of sand like the higher if it's higher sand content it's going to vitrify and turn to glass but we don't see that but anyway it's, most of it's geo geopolymer and there's, there's, in my eyes there's no argument about it now it's crystal clear I do have hours and hours and hours of conversation between me and uh, Mr. X. So it's very hard to decipher key points and, and break it down. You know, like I think I gave you a 35 minute video yesterday and that took me a few days just to, to break it down. So I don't know how I'm going to do it. But anyway, let's have a look at this, the Great Circle. I know I'm a flat earther and this is a um, Google Earth map. But... Obviously, Mr. X was telling me about the equator moving. Obviously, the equator is, some people say it's, it's, a, cent, it's, it's uh, a ring around the Earth, but obviously, it's, it's a path directly below the sun. That's exactly what the equator is. So, apparently, the sun had a different path back in the day, and it passed all of these ancient sites, which I found very interesting. It's insane I'm going to look into. And if anyone knows anything about it, hit me up because I'd like a little head start because this is quite an interesting topic very interesting topic as it goes so yeah all these that you can see all these sites are in a line on the old equator so it's very interesting stuff very very interesting stuff And one other thing before we go to a Brucey bonus, I was just doing some research and I come across this flag and it says for religion, kings, covenant and king domes. Uh, do you know what? Years ago I always wondered if it was called king domes, especially when I found out about the world being uh, a pancake and we lived under a dome and king domes. And at that time I used to think there was multiple domes under one big dome, you know, but who knows? Who knows the script? Let's have a Brucey. Right, so I'm not gonna, I don't wanna, I'm gonna big up some people now, people that I absolutely love on YouTube at the minute. These people are, in my opinion, knocking out some serious content. So, Bushwhacking History in Buffalo, please subscribe and watch this geezer because he's doing some stuff over the Niagara Falls and he's doing some wicked stuff on construction. Uh, mate, this geezer's wicked, check him out. Like, look at the videos. Like, I, I absolutely, uh, hopefully, me and Wooden Nichols and Dustin can have a little session together, like on the internet. That'd be a good, good little watch. And Wooden Nichols, brilliant guy. I watched one of his videos just there. Again, he's, he's unbelievable. Really good stuff. Uh, like, it's just my opinion. But if you're watching this channel, then 99% you're going to love watching this sort of stuff. Wicked. What a lovely geezer. And obviously, the next one, everyone will know this, is the Tartarian Truthers all the way in Australia. These guys are absolutely killing it for me. Absolutely killing it. I love them. Big up girls. They're doing a brilliant job. Absolutely loving it. And it's the same sort of stuff that I do. It's probably why I love it, to be honest with you. But so far, these three channels are spot on, in my opinion. 
And then we've got Mind on Valve. This, in my, my, again, my opinion, is the best channel on YouTube. It's like we're in sync, me, in this channel. Every time I want to go and do something, they've done it. It's like they're a step in front. But I can't complain. They knock out the best videos I've seen on YouTube, hands down. So I pick up people, give them a little uh, little watch. But you probably already know that anyway. They're massive. They're absolutely killing it. Now, the next part, I'm not treading on no one's toes. And, and please don't think I'm being rude or putting anyone down. It's just my opinion next. All right? Now, he wore on. Everyone's been uploading the video, and everyone's been going, oh, check it out, check it out. I'm fully aware. I've watched the video. And he gave his opinion. And there's nothing wrong with an opinion. So I'm going to give my opinion now. He reckons the building was built in 1904. And I reckon it was renovated in 1904. So let's have a look at what evidence I have collated. And then we'll go over my opinion. So this is the grounds of the cathedral. And it's extremely old. And if you ask me, it's like there used to be a star fault there. Because when you look at all the ditches and the block work and where it's positioned. Look, and even you can even see the scratch marks on the wall. Where, like where you look in Baalbek, Malta, China. You know, the long haul caves. Everything. You've got this cutting mark all over. And this is underneath the cathedral. And again, very star faulty, no? Very, very star faulty, and I don't know what's up with all these uh, gravestones because it's like they're just a prop. Because look, they're lined up against the wall. They're lined up like they're making a pathway. Like what are you walking on? You're walking on dead bodies under this. Like this is clearly a prop. This is a propaganda prop for the subliminal mind. So when you walk through here, you think, oh right, yeah, this was a this was a cathedral. Uh, look. These are just geopolymer stones. They're props. They're nothing more than props. Because if they were actual gravestones, that means you'd be walking over loads of dead bodies, wouldn't you? And that's very disrespectful. But like I said, this down here, this was the ditch of a star fort, I'm telling you now. And another thing is, I've said star forts are connected to water. This place has a spring. So the cathedral that's on top, I'm saying, could have been part of a star fort or a monastery but here you can see they've got blocked up tunnels this is in a ditch still by the way we're still in a ditch of that cathedral that's been renovated in 1904 basically you've got downsized that's what I'm saying but look at this this is something you'd see in Malta take away the gravestones this is something you see in Malta and what's with all these blocked up tunnels eh? so this must have been a spot of importance because you've got about 10 tunnels going to this point now, this is where water would come from. There's about five points down here where you can you can get water from. And that's in the ditch, but they call it the graveyard or the gardens. But it's the ditch of a star fort, I'm telling you. I've got pictures and I'll show you. And this is another fountain. Obviously, you have some sort of geopolymer or rock cut rock at the bottom, then built on with red brick. And then you've got some sort of casing stones forming an arch. And again, here we go. So, even the red brick is extremely old. Extremely old. I mean, I look at buildings that are 500 years old, but it's got a date on it, whether the dates are right or not, and they look more immaculate than that. And it's funny how this water is still running after all this time. So, like, like I said, it looked like a star fall. And you can see how much weathering is on these walls. And even the gravestones, like how long they've been there. And you can see that there's quite a few entrances underneath. So the grounds of this is extremely old. Now, this is what it looks like when it was being renovated. But if you ask me, it's <laughs> I've got some serious pictures to show you. And you can just make your mind up at the end. But to me here, it seems like it's being renovated. But obviously you can't make your mind up with just that one picture. So, here we go. You can see everything else around it is, is extremely old extremely old I mean look at the columns on that building not the cathedral and also if you look at the cathedral you can see the arches the mini arches either side of the large arch they've been blocked up it's different brickwork and again here this is I think 1905 or 6 or something like that when they said it is like 1907 sorry but look how weathered it is on the roof not the roof of the tower because that tower is meant to be new but it looks old 
on the roof of the actual nave. Now this is going to knock your socks off because this is, look at the window, the big arched window. That's what got put there. Yeah, that's what, that's the latest addition. Right, and if you look to the left, this is all new and cleaned up. Now I'm going to show you this picture. This is the same spot, just a different picture, a different date. Now you can see where I said that big arched window is, that's not there. See, that's the new addition. This is what it used to look like. And you can even see how old world it looks like here. So they've cleaned all this up. And the foundations, that foundation goes down 20 foot. This is, they have basically renovated this place. Let me just put this side to side for you. Right, here we go. So this is where they've converted this window. Nice and easy for you to see. And you can see where they've gone from the old world stonework to the new renovated. And same here, they fixed this up down here as well. So you can see it's completely changed. All the ornamentation and they've added a new floor. So all the ornamentation above these little arches, they're all gone. So what were they doing, eh? Renovating this place and then saying it was built in 1905. And can you imagine the people that are around in like, in the, uh, one more thing. This is, they said that someone won a competition and this was this is the design. But that's not the building we see. Maybe that was what was there before that. That's the only thing I can think of. Because if someone won a competition to build the, to design it and build it, why ain't it looking like that? Now this is what they told us they used. Now this is where it gets very interesting. Because I'm not interested in this picture, it's the next one. Because we're told they used hammer and bolster. And you can see that that block next to it is... is it's done by a machine because I'm going to zoom in and you'll see all the bolster mark, all the all the machine marks all over it, and every block in that cathedral is machine cut or geopolymer. Not one single one is done by hand. There's a few photos down near the crypt there. Here's one of them. It's just a prop because you can see all them stones are all uneven. Not one of them's flush, and you ain't going to get nothing flush with a chisel and a, a, a bolster and a hammer. So this is a stage photo, where they've just got a load of geezers lined up with a load of blocks and they're all hammering, uh, holding a hammer and bolster. And here you go, you can see, like, you can see this one part of it's so smooth you're not doing that with no chance with a hammer and bolster. And it all, the one in the middle almost looks like it was a geopolymer mix, like poured in little sections, that's what it looks like, into a bucket and a set. And here. Look at, it, look at a propped picture, the geezer's holding a massive mallet and he's meant to be chipping that out. But look how perfect it is, that's a geopolymer mix. Uh, what can I say, eh? So let's have a look at these stones then. Do these really look like they've been cut with a hammer and bolster? It don't look like it to me, it looks like it's machine cut. <laughs> Unbelievable, eh? And another thing is when we built it now, all blocks are the same size, but here it's all different sizes. Uh, personally, I think this was renovated. But again, look at that. Look how precise that is. It's done by machine. Look at these blocks. Absolutely perfect. This is what, this is, the <laughs> look at it. That's what it is. This is the building. Renovated in 1905, downsized in 1905 slippery gets so this is just my opinion anyway it's just my opinion with what i found so i'm not trying to tread on no one's toes here you go look perfectly smooth blocks with geopolymer ornamentation that's all this is and like i said this little image in the right hand corner is just an image that someone won as a design but that never got built anyway let me know what you think about waffle rock i hope i didn't waffle on too much and I'm trying to manifest 100,000 subscribers by the time Christmas comes around. So please, it takes a second to subscribe, so all you've got to do, click on it, boom, and then get. So don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and all that jazz. Have a blessed weekend. I love you all. Thanks for tuning in. Ta da!